Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have another gather round plan and prep video for you. We are going to be getting ready to start the unit artists. I am so excited to start the gather round artist unit with my kids. Now, if you've been around my channel a little while, this might actually surprise you. I've mentioned on here before that I would not label myself the crafty mom. The idea of letting my kids create freely, running around the house with glitter and finger paints and glue, all while I'm trying to get laundry done and get dinner on the table, this stresses me out. But the idea of intentional and structured time set aside in our day for us to study art, to do art projects, and to get a little bit crafty, as long as this has a very clear starting and stopping point, this excites me. So a little known fact you may not know about me is that I actually went to school to be an art teacher. I, I changed my major in college a few times, but in high school and in college, I took some drawing and some painting classes that absolutely made me fall in love with art. And so when I was in college, I was studying to be a middle school art teacher but the Lord had different plans. I actually never finished. I met my husband, fell in love, got married, had kids, and became a homeschool teacher instead. So to say that I'm excited about this unit from Gather Round it is putting it lightly. This is right up my alley and I, I am feeling really inspired. All right, so let's just get started by talking about the nitty gritty of what you need to do to start this unit. The first thing you're going to need to do is to hop onto the Gather Round website and purchase the unit, either digitally or in print form. Now, here in our house, in our homeschool, we buy the family bundle, the digital unit, and I do all of our printing of our curriculum here in our house. You guys have probably heard me talk about my printer that I absolutely love and use to print all of our units. I will make sure to link it down below, but it takes me about a good hour or so to download the curriculum and print out all of the different notebooks and guides that we're going to need to use for the unit. Okay, so real quick, let's just talk binding. In the past, I have used two different types of binding systems for our units. First of all, I have done just regular old three hole punches where I put the papers in a three ring binder or notebook like this. I've also been recently experimenting with the Happy Planner Discs. And if you're not familiar with this system, essentially what it is is it is a big punch that puts these little cuts into your paper where you can put in different discs. And it allows you to kind of take your pages on and off of these discs very easily. They are reusable, so you can use this system from one unit to the next. But I honestly, I don't think that I'm going to continue to use the Happy Planner system system anymore. And um, I talked a little bit about this in my Africa video, but I'll give you a few more details here. I really did not enjoy using these discs with my younger kids, especially my first grader, Mariah, who is seven years old. She really had a hard time keeping her pages together with this disc system. She dropped her notebook a couple of times and pages fell out. Um, she would turn her page and just some of them would accidentally come out. If you're not careful, you will have a hard time with this system. Now, that being said, I think that the discs work really well for older students, for middle schoolers, high schools, and for adults. I have been actually using this on my teacher guides and, and it's worked pretty well. I just, I don't love the stability of it or lack thereof. And, and so I just don't think I'm gonna use it anymore. And my biggest reason for not using it with my older kids and with myself is the time that it takes to bind things. You can only punch a few pages at a time. And so when I am trying to bind notebooks for myself and for my two older kids, only being able to punch, you know, four or five pages at a time when I'm, I need to punch, you know, maybe a few hundred, this takes a lot of time and effort. Whereas I have a three hole punch that can easily hole punch 40 pages at one time. So just for the easeability and the quickness of being able to put our units together, 
I am going to go back to oldie and a goodie, just the three hole punch and putting our units into three ring binders. Now I know that there are other gather round mamas who will take their units to an office supply store like FedEx or something like that and have them professionally bound or spiral bound. And, and I think that's a great solution. It's just not something I want to spend money on right now. I, I'm fine just using good old fashioned three ring binders. All right, so let's also talk about supplies, things that you are going to need to purchase or have on hand to do this unit. Now, there is a supply list written out on page seven of the teacher's guide, and there is also an additional optional supply list included on page eight of the teacher's companion. And I guess because it was an art unit, I was assuming that I was probably going to need to spend a good bit of money on extra art supplies, but I was happily surprised. When I took a look at the supply list, most of the items needed were things that I already had on hand for our homeschool. Supplies that I would assume most established homeschoolers already own. Now, there are definitely some extras, some supplies and materials that I went ahead and purchased for this unit that I will make sure to link below and I'm going to talk about as we go through the video today. But I would definitely encourage you before you start this unit, make sure you look through the entire supply list and have everything you need on hand. This unit, more than any other unit that I have seen from Gather Round, is just absolutely jam-packed with information. If you take just a quick glance at the table of contents, you will see that you are going to be doing an introduction to all kinds of different arts painters, ballet dancers, composers, sculptors, actors, architects, novelists, pencil artists, interior designers. The, the list goes on and on. This is definitely just an introduction to the arts. You could take any one of these individual lessons and beef it up into its own mini unit. You could study composers, for two or three weeks and go through and talk about Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, and study each one of them individually or go through the different time periods. You could take one of these lessons that are meant to be done in one day and study it for several weeks on end. And so it's for that reason that I am planning to use this unit study a little bit differently than I use my other gather round units. I have decided to spread the artist's unit out throughout the rest of our entire semester. We are going to do one lesson per week, most likely on Fridays, every week for the rest of the semester. So we may not even get through this entire unit this year. We may have to complete it maybe over the summer or even moving into our next school year. And I'm okay with that. I really want to take time to hone in and savor each of these individual lessons and have time to go down some extra rabbit trails or do more in-depth projects that go along with each lesson. So the levels I will be using from this unit, obviously I will be using the teacher guide and teacher companion for myself. I will also be doing the middle school pages with my sixth and seventh grader. And then I'll be doing the early reader pages with my first grader who is seven years old. Now for us in our home, we will not be using the seat work or the writing projects that go along with this unit. We supplement with other language art and other curriculum. So that is part of Gather Round that we just are not utilizing for our family. The other thing that is a little bit different, and I mentioned this in my video a few weeks ago where I did a semester update, my middle schoolers are going to be using Gather Round a little bit differently this semester. They are only going to be required to do two pages out of their student notebook every single day. They are going to do number one, the first page that's in every lesson, the note taking page. I'll have them fill that out as I read the lesson aloud. And then they will also be doing one additional worksheet that is mama's choice. Whichever worksheet that goes with that lesson that I've decided I want them to focus on. I am really using gather round with my middle schoolers to focus in on geography, science, history, and the arts. So I'm really just pulling those worksheets and focusing in on those and we are skipping most of the others. 
Now, my early reader, my first grader, she is going to be using her student notebook as is. She may skip a language arts page here or there just because we supplement with other language arts curriculum, but for the most part, I'm going to continue to use Gather Round as is with Mariah. All right, so let's talk books that I'm going to be using alongside of the artist's unit. Gather Round has actually really beefed up their book suggestion lists. I loved them last year, but I am loving them even more this year. On pages 9 through 15 of The Teacher's Companion are dozens upon dozens of books suggested to go with each of the lessons in this unit. And so I don't necessarily feel like I need to provide you all with a lot of book titles because there, there are so many included in this unit. But of course, you guys know that I have a few other books that I want to highlight for you all. These are books that I am really hoping to focus on and use throughout the entirety of the unit from lesson one all the way through lesson 20. First of all, I have the DK the Arts Visual Encyclopedia. And I don't know if you guys can see this on here, but oh, it is just gorgeous. It has a beautiful cover with just this really pretty gold print. And this encyclopedia covers all types of things in the arts just like this artist's unit does. It covers all kinds of different painters and painting styles, dance, music, photography. This is going to be a wonderful book that we will draw from week in and week out as we do the artist's unit. I also have several art reference books in particular from Usborne. This is the Usborne book of famous artists. We will probably heavily use this book for the painter's lesson, but I can see us definitely pulling information for several of the lessons in this unit. I will also be using this Usborne Famous Painting deck of cards. I've mentioned these here on my channel before, but these are just beautiful cards. Uh, they're kind of index card style of different famous paintings. And you could use these for picture studies or memorization, things like that. But what I love about them is they're, they're really nice and thick and bulky, so they're great for younger kids. And then on the back, there is just a ton of information about the paintings, about the artist who created them. So we will definitely be using these every single Friday just for picture studies. Some other Usborne books I am planning to use are the Usborne Classical Music Sticker Book. I will probably really use this with Mariah, my first grader, but this has loads of great information for my older kids as well. We will also be using the Usborne Famous Composers Reference Book. I also have a couple of orchestra style books that I'm hoping to use and use the companion CDs that go along with these as background music. This is the story of the orchestra. And again, it comes with a CD that you can play that says, listen while you learn about the different instruments. So we will definitely be using this book. I'll also be using this Classical Music for Dummies. I know that that's kind of a silly title, um, kind of a strange book, but I used this book when I did Classical Conversations when I was a tutor there, and the CD that goes along with this book is just fantastic. So we'll be using the music from these to listen to as I am reading our artist teacher guide every single week. So like most homeschool mamas, I have quite the variety of how to draw books. First of all, I have this. These are the Watch Me Draw series. I have several of these and they are great for younger kids, preschool, kindergarten, maybe even early elementary school. This one is a boy's adventure. I also have a girl's adventure and, and there's several books in this series, but they're really great just kind of introductory to drawing for younger children. I also have, oh, gobs of these one, two, three draw books. I picked up most of these secondhand, but I have one about cars and trucks, dinosaurs, knights and castles, uh, all, all kinds of different versions of this one, two, three draw. And then the third one I wanted to highlight are the draw and write through history. This is great if you are using this unit and want to study a little bit more in depth about a certain period 
period in history. I think I own all of the books in the series, but right here I have Greece and Rome, um, The Vikings, Creation Through Jonah. These are wonderful books for pairing, drawing along with maybe a history study. Another set of books that I will heavily be relying on throughout this entire artist's unit is poetry books. I already do some poetry reading on almost a daily basis as part of our morning time. I try to read at least one or two poems around the breakfast table and, and I pull from different books. So I'm just gonna mention a few of our favorites that I'm really going to be using throughout the rest of this year. Number one is Sing a Song of Seasons. I've mentioned this book before. It has wonderful nature-themed poems to go along with every single day of the year. I will also be using the Julie Andrews collection of poems, lullabies, and songs. We love this book. We've had it for several years. I actually own it on audiobook as well. This is also a wonderful book to use because there's actually an artist profile done on Julie Andrews. I think it is in the actor's lesson in this unit. So this book is just very timely to be using. We're also really enjoying the Bill Martin Jr. Big Book of Poetry. This one has been great, especially for Mariah, my first grader. And speaking of Mariah, she actually got this A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, The Poetry of Mr. Rogers. Uh, she got this for Christmas. And so we've been reading a couple of these passages every day. And this book just has wonderful illustrations. If you are a Mr. Rogers fan, you will definitely enjoy the poetry and songs from this book. Now I've mentioned on here before that my son Noah, his favorite poet is Jack Proletsky. So if you kind of like silly, wacky poetry, anything by him is wonderful. Currently we are working through Something Big Has Been Here. So you guys already know that I like to pick at least one chapter book to go along with each of our gather round units to use as a read aloud at breakfast time with my kids. The artist's unit is no different. For this unit, I'm going to be reading aloud from the mixed up files from Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. Now, this was a book that I read when I was a child. I've read it to the kids before, but we're going to read it again. It is just so, so much fun. If you are not familiar with this novel, it is a story of two children, Claudia and Jamie, a brother and sister, who run away from home and live in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. And while they are living, there they get caught up in a mystery about an angel statue. This book is just wonderful and will fit perfectly with our artists unit study. Okay, so let's talk movies. There are so, so, so many movies that you could pair along with the lessons in this unit. You could watch several full-length films, cartoons, documentaries. I mean, there are a bazillion options. So I thought I would just share the list that I have been brainstorming as I've been planning for this unit. Again, this is not an extensive list. There are so many more you could add to this. First of all, I think we will watch some of the episodes from Bob Ross, especially when we are studying painters. Next up, the movie Leap would be a great movie to do when you are doing the ballet lesson. Now, I haven't personally watched this one yet, but Frank and Ollie is a documentary on Disney Plus that talks about a couple of cartoonists from Disney. Mr. Holland's Opus would be fun, especially if you have older children to do with the lesson to go along with composers. We will definitely be watching maybe an entire season of The Great British Baking Show when we do the lesson about dessert artists. For lesson eight about short stories, we may watch the movie Hans Christian Andersen because there is an artist profile in that lesson about him. We might also watch Miss Potter, which of course is the story of Beatrix Potter. As I already mentioned in lesson 10 about actors, there's a profile done on Julie Andrews. So basically any movie with her in it would be appropriate to watch with that. So you could do Mary Poppins, The Sound of Music. There's also a kids series on Netflix called Julie's Green Room that has puppets that's super fun if you have younger children. For lesson 11 about playwrights and screenwriters, there is a profile done on the Kendricks brothers. And so 
you could pretty much watch any film done by them. I think for our family, we're going to watch Facing the Giants. Noah, my 13 year old, and my older kids, they will definitely enjoy that movie. Mariah requested that we would watch the movie Sing to go along with the singer's lesson. That, that's just an animated film I'm sure you're familiar with. Lesson 15 is devoted to novelists and there's a profile done on C.S. Lewis, so we will probably watch one, if not all, of the Narnia films. Lastly, we will definitely be watching some episodes of Fixer Upper for the lesson that goes along with interior designers. Again, there is a few paragraphs about Joanna Gaines, so watching Fixer Upper will be appropriate. All right, so let's talk about some extra activities that I'm hoping to plan with this unit. First of all, for our entire family, I am really hoping to put some field trips on our calendar. First of all, I would love to visit our local art museum for obvious reasons. It would also be fun if we can maybe go see a ballet or visit a theater and see a musical or a play of some form. And of course, why would we not want to go to a theater and watch a movie and call it a school field trip? It would also be fun to go to a bakery and maybe try out some different treats, talk to somebody who maybe decorates cakes or creates different desserts for a living. And then I'm not sure if we have one open in our area right now, but it would be really fun to do a paint your own pottery class, or I know there's different studios in different cities. That, that would be really fun to do with this lesson. So I'm really hoping to get some field trips put on our calendar, just depending on what's open and available throughout the rest of the semester. For my middle schoolers and my elementary school child, I am really going to focus in on weekly projects. For instance, when we do the lesson on painters, I went ahead and bulk ordered some canvases. Uh, these aren't very big. These are just kind of um, maybe eight by 10 or so, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Um, but I will just let them take these canvases with some acrylic paints and go to town. I also have watercolors on hand and some watercolor paper if they would like to try their hand at watercolor. When we get to the baking lesson, we will probably dedicate maybe a Saturday afternoon and let them bake for the day, bake a cake or bake cookies or, or whatever they're interested in baking. I went ahead and picked up a tub of air dry clay. That way they can try their hand at sculpting or pottery ceramics, that sort of thing. My kids are all involved in piano lessons, so when we get to the lesson about composers, I'm going to encourage them to write their own song and play it on the piano. As I mentioned before, I have a lot of poetry books that we are going to use, so the week that we do the poetry lesson, we will do a poetry tea time. We may also do something similar when we study short stories and novelists. I've talked about this on our channel before, but we really enjoy doing storybook snack hours. When we do the lessons about architects and interior designers, I'm hoping to have my kids draw out their own blueprints and build 3D models with Legos or design something in a dollhouse, kind of use toys that we already have on hand to flesh out the lesson in play. There are so many directions that we could go with this unit, so many different things we could do with every single lesson. I'm, I'm really just excited to see where the curriculum takes us, where my children children's interests lie and, and what rabbit trails they want to go down. And honestly, I'm excited to do a lot of these projects alongside of them. Okay, so let's talk toddlers. I have an almost three-year-old. He's going to be three in February. And as I've mentioned on here many of times, he is not formally doing any form of homeschool. However, I do like to take the opportunity of our unit studies to come up with some hands-on activities and fun things for him to do in his free time on those days when he toddles in and he wants to be a part of what we're doing and he wants to do school. I like to have some activities and opportunities options for him. So I am hoping with this unit to really just focus in on colors. Now Ezra, he already knows the name of most of his colors, 
but as any toddler or preschooler, he loves this. And so I am choosing several activities all based around colors. First of all, I have just this plastic shoe bin full of different colored pom-poms. And we could do a lot of different things, a sensory bin, things like that. One thing I'm thinking we will do is I will get out a red, a yellow, a green, a blue cup and let him kind of sort all of the different pom-poms by color. Next up, I have this large Ziploc bag full of different counting bears, counting trains, counting dinosaurs, all kinds of different counting objects that I have collected over the years as we have homeschooled. So these, again, will be fun for him to sort by color. I also have this 50 counter activities. These are different cards. Now these are meant for ages four and up, but there's a lot of these that I could sit and do with him as just a little fun activity. So this is kind of math and colors put together. I also have this carton of eggs color matching puzzle. It has a dozen eggs in it that you pull apart and they are different colors and different shapes on the inside. So he, he can use these to play with colors and with shapes. Also, I have dot paints, or I guess these are called bingo markers, things like that. These are one of Ezra's favorite activities, just to be able to open these and stamp out different pictures. There are coloring books and activity books that go along with these dot paints that are super fun. So I am putting these on his shelf for this unit. I also pulled out um, his smock. I have several of these preschool toddler size smocks that are great for painting or messy projects, kind of to protect his clothing. So that's going to go on his shelf. Lastly, I'm going to get our large roll of paper out. I think we bought this at Ikea several years ago, but every month or so, I like to get out a large roll of paper, roll it across the kitchen floor, give him some crayons or some colored pencils, and just let him go to town. He thinks it's so fun to be able to color on something that size. And oftentimes, my elementary school and middle school kids get in on the fun as well. So I'm sure we will get a lot of use out of our large roll of paper. Okay guys, well that wraps things up for today. We are so excited to get started on this artist's unit from Gather Round. Like I said, we're going to be doing it once a week on Fridays and it's just Friday fun day. I will be looking forward to our Fridays every single week in our homeschool. I, I think this is going to be just as fun and encouraging for mama as it is for my kids. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please take a second, give it a thumbs up, like it below. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and leave me a comment. Let me know if you have done the artist's unit from Gather Round or if you are planning on using it. I would love to meet you and just join in on community of doing this unit together. I hope that your homeschool year is going great. See you later.